forever. Dog. Hey, this is Gabe Gonzalez, and I host the brand new podcast, QWERTY. And this is Alex Berg, and I host the brand new podcast, LGBTQ Nation. Two brand new podcasts made lovingly just for you. On Thursdays, I sit down with the best LGBTQ journalists, activists, and politicians to discuss the most pressing topics in the community. And on Fridays, I end each messy week right by sitting down with the funniest, smartest, and sexiest people in the world to talk pop culture, entertainment, news and more. LGBTQ Nation and Queerty, politics and pop culture. On Thursdays, you cry. On Fridays, you laugh. No, no, it's not all sad. We have some good news on Thursdays. Okay, like, what am I talking about? These days, you can cry every day of the week. Listen to both shows and get to know everything you need to know. You're already holding your phone, so subscribe to Queerty and LGBTQ Nation today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Only Only on on Forever Dog. Dog. House is totally hot. Ooh, are we in hot spring? It really is. Yes, we the are thermal. recording live from a hot spring. Mm-hmm. Um, welcome back for oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> toot toot. Hey, yeah. beep beep. Hey, uh, Mister. Well, <laughs> got some hot gas. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back for yet another steaming. steaming. Piping, scolding, serving of hot, hot gods. gods. This is our weekly chat show where we talk about events in our lives, lives. gossip and politics, politics, and take a dream drive, drive into the dreams. Let's get into some hot, hot gossica. Honey, I just need the note to note this look today. I see the hairs inspired by Got Mix, Bag Ball, Final Runway. Yeah. Yeah. And the look is uh-huh. very um, nighttime, um, uh, edge of glory, woman on the streets, finding her uh-huh. purpose. You know, the midnight sky is the road that I am taking. H- and girl, uh-huh. head high up to the cloud, but keep that chin down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> if I hear for one more photographer chin down, I swear to God, I'm gonna snap. <laughs> I always get chin down, shoulders up, turn around. That sounds like uh, a fun song. I I don't know about you, but I get um I get tweeted at every single day by the Queer Tea Awards because oh, they are the letting the, they are letting the dolls know they are tagging the girls. And Every the, four hours, <laughs> babe. I mean, they must be doing <laughs> it to you. all the contestants. But girl, I'm I, happy for it. I um, we are very honored to be a nominatrices of the um, Queer Tea Queer Awards. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't forget to vote for us for um best podcast. Um, yeah. You could do or, that once a day at QueerTees.com. And this is an honor and a distinction that's been disposed upon us um, numerous times. I, I can't, I, I've lost track, you know, after it comes into the multitudes. <laughs> multitudes, apparently. Multitudes, twice. <laughs> I um, mean. But what a distinction. And what a wonderful, uh, <laughs> what a wonderful way to celebrate Groundhog's Day. Um. So, you know, I think that... Uh, we we're in we're in some really good company. We have some amazing oh, yeah. divas and sisters in the podcast category. So vote with your feelings, vote with your heart. Um, Remember, the hole is where the heart is. You can vote, <laughs> and and there's a O in mom. That's the hole. <laughs> exactly, right in the middle. Um, so you can vote once a day at queertees.com. com. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you feel like it. Go ahead. And it really is easy. It isn't one of those ones where you have to vote for every single category. You can just pop in and uh, mm-hmm. uh, pop on a vote for podcast and then go about your day. Not click that I've tar, done it. Put it in the toaster, click it. Not that I've done it multiple times. Um, oh, I saw you on that iPod. I, uh, uh, anyway. Anyway, but anyway, that's after Bianca lands a joke. But anyway, wait, what if it doesn't land? Uh, then she says, "Shut the fuck up, faggot." 
<laughs> Even though they're not laughing, she tells them to shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up is usually the first the the first reply to anything, I think. Um, oh, you're so offended. Why don't you book her? I mean, my God. But anyway. Girl, you know who's going to get all the bookings? Miss Stacey Abrams. She's nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> Honey. That's fierce. I'm so Girl, glad. Uh, I want I want her to run for president whenever she wants, and then just to come mm-hmm. to the first debate and put that peace prize right on the thing. And she just, said, "Honey, excuse me, I'll give you peace." And then Latrice can come out and say, "I'm at peace." I'm and then we could all eat that. some ruby red nuts. <laughs> <laughs> ruby, red. ruby is red hot. <laughs> That's amazing news. Yeah, um, just in time for Black History Month too. Right. We are uh we are a few days into Black History Month, which is amazing. So Black History Month was um started almost a hundred years ago in nineteen twenty six by Dr. Carter G. Woodson. And work. it was the second week in February, and then it expanded to the whole month because if you liked a week, how about a month of it? Honey, Baby. everything good in culture is taken from African American people in America basically or tea. people of color in general. Um Whitey has has prospered off of it for too long, for sure. Um, and this past year has been a huge movement for the Black Lives Matter movement and uplifting black voices and for so many people in our country to really look at white supremacy that fuels so many institutions. Um, there was something that I read about like there's levels of like from racist to like the opposite of racist, which is like it's not anti-racist. An- yeah, it's where you like go like if you see something racist, you go out of you make sure you correct it. You don't let things slide or whatever. Right. And I realized that sometimes I have been like a seven probably on stuff that um, now it's like eight hardcore like speak. I was never one to hold my tongue anyway. But like, girl, I I I feel like I can't if I feel like this way right now, like so horrified at the country and what they put um lots of minorities through imagine how they feel right like i have no right to even like feel anything like what the fuck they have years of that um so i'm doing my part to listen and uh you know same thing you're doing you're doing the the fundraisers and all the things this has been like sure it's been downtime for drag queens and a lot of people but if we can come out better on the other side of this and i'm like committed to that for sure like that's my, tea. my hairline's so cute right now from not destroying it with bobby pins. Snatcherella, du jour, Dubois, Dupree. <laughs> um yeah. and okay, this is this is written on the outline, and I think it I think it's worth saying uh that in this country, this country was built upon the enslavement of, of people. And the truth is slavery was active for way longer than freedom for black people. And I think it's important that we think about this, uh, not just, you know, this month, but all the time. Um, Black History Month is an important time for white people and all people to take some personal responsibility to educate themselves and listen to the strong black voices that are around us. So just like pride, it's not about just one month out of the calendar. It's an all year thing that we need to keep in our brains and our hearts. But February is the moment, the reminder, the marquee month to celebrate black history. Mm-hmm. Did you know that RuPaul is nominated for an NAACP award for best host in a reality show competition? Oh, Speaking of that's mother. Mage. That's major Tina. Um, I live. You know India Moore from Pose, right? Yes. She just she put up a big post this morning that said, I just came here to say the NAACP and Image Awards are all transphobic. That's all. Mm. And then she details everything like, you know, it's an Ooh. it's an Emmy nominated and winning show, and yet the NAACP Apparently, has only nominated. It says one cis gay queer man from it. I think You're so maybe Billy or something. To pose, right? Yeah, like she went in, and oh. I mean, maybe RuPaul's the one she's referring to. This the. She said, I remember the year that Pose was eligible. They actually skipped over black trans talent to nominate white folks and black queer cis men. Mm. I mean. Uh, I do know my aunt's been nominated for a BET award and she's a little white lady. So white people do get nominated sometimes. Wow. But okay. I'm going to be watching that. Wow. Okay. Yes. I mean, that's the thing is like, it's 
there's even more of a struggle to be seen and heard uh, for trans uh, uh, trans people of color. So like this is a fucking so let's remember that you know that that we fucking love our fucking trans sisters. Uh and uh speaking of sisters, uh, how sister. about Tony Pops? Tony Pops. Who's that? Tony Pops is our rainbow spotlight of the week. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about our sisters. Oh, I, Tony Pops. I thought you said Tony I thought it said Tony Tops and I <laughs> and I almost just logged right off. Honey, uh, I wanted Pony Tops. <laughs> Pony oh, top pony stacks. Top. Pony top bar. Hey, this pony, is a fabulous pony, Friday pony, sale. Pony <laughs> uh, we have a, a very fun Rainbow Spotlight song for you today. It's called Tony Pops, Feeling Good. What needs it, to be done. What needs to be done. This is a vibey house track, and the video features Gravity Balmain from yes. Legendary. Oh, Balmain, because they're the main event. Okay, that's, that's how you pronounce it. Well, I mean, from Legendary. Um, so let's give a listen and let's find out um, how, what needs to be done. Right give now. a little listen. Listen. Kiki, I do what I need. What needs to be done? Kiki, I do what I need. What needs to be done? Kiki, I do what I need. What needs to be done? Kiki, I do what I need. What needs to be done? Kiki, I do what I need. When life gets a bit overwhelming, we all have our go-to coping behavior, and that can help as a Band-Aid. But talking to a therapist can work better. Oh, so you mean taking steps toward better mental health? Exactly, totally. And BetterHelp offers those services. They are a great resource for online counseling. BetterHelp assesses your needs, and then they match you with your own licensed professional therapist. They have a broad range of expertise to choose from. That's right. And you'll get timely and thoughtful responses from your counselor. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions from home. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. And it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling with financial aid available. Visit BetterHelp.com slash drag. That's better, H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Special offer for Race Chaser listeners. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash drag. drag. That's betterhelp.com slash drag. drag. For 10% off your first month. BetterHelp is professional counseling done online in the comfort and safety of your own home. We are back, uh, and we have some sad news. I mean, this came really as a shock, and I, you know, it, I've seen so much on social media and so much on Twitter that uh, is still like reverberating from the shocking death of electronic music pop artist Sophie, who died on January thirtieth. The Grammy-nominated experimental pop artist and producer Sophie died in a terrible accident on Saturday morning. She was only 34, according to a statement from the musician's record label, Transgressive. Um, There's a quote here. Do you want to read it? Yeah. Tragically, our beautiful Sophie passed away this morning after a terrible accident. True to her spirituality, she had climbed up to watch the full moon and slipped and fell. Uh, They posted that on Twitter. Uh, I I know about her from her collabs with like every pop artist, Madonna, Gaga, Charlie X, C X. Uh, well, how do you Petras, say that? Charlie X, 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 X,
every everybody loved her and the outpouring yeah. um you know her music is she i hope she wins a grammy this year because of it you know yes because she was nominated last year and the thing about sophie is like i didn't i didn't I didn't know her, you know, her music in depth or or like I didn't know a lot about her, but she's one of those figures in music who has so many connections to other artists and just music that you have heard. So whether you know who Sophie is or not, you know who Sophie is. Mm -hmm. So this is a major moment. Um, She was born in Glasgow. Sophie released a number of singles and projects and was subsequently nominated for Best Dance Electronic Album at the 2019 Grammys. Uh, She was a prominent part of the PC music label and has worked on music, like you said. Uh, Madonna, Gaga, Charlie XCX, Vince Staples, Kim Petras, and tons more. So she will definitely be missed. We'll be feeling uh, the absence of an amazing and prolific artist. Um, so it's really, really sad. Uh, and it, I mean, it's just a reminder of like how, you know, how fucking unpredictable and short life is and how precious it is. True. Uh, so, um, we were thinking of you, Sophie, and you will be missed. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a we have a little uh, political uh, me, me, moment. Me 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 you la 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 sherry pie. Okay, um, <laughs> fuck. Let's get oh beep. Political, political. I, I want to get, get political. Let Let's talk about a farmer sign. strike. Oh, yeah. uh, there's a farmer strike going on in India. It's one of the biggest in the world right now. Farmers okay. in India have been protesting since June when the new government, when the government passed new laws around farming industry and labor laws that are not transparent and stand to hurt the farmers financially. The protests are huge. I've seen them on the internet. It's in like the Twitter like news because that's how I get my news from the Explorer page. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a march on Delhi that was accompanied by a 24 hour strike of 250 million people on uh, November 26th last year. And between the 28th and December 3rd, the number of farmers blocking the roads and trains to Delhi was estimated made it at 150 to 300,000. I know you've been to India and so have I, and you know how many people are over there and their farms like kind of like support the whole world yet. They're not given an equitable piece of the economic pie at all. Apparently I'm learning right. about all this stuff new. So like, I understand farmers wanting more money. Like um, they provide so much of the world's food yet. Right. They don't get a big enough seat at the table, I guess. The government is using anti-protesting tactics tactics like cutting internet access and pushing back in the street and this is a huge story that's not getting played on um, American media that much and we are so consumed with our own politics but this is a massive global issue that is related to climate change, agriculture, human rights, labor activism, the economy, everything. I mean, if if one of the major companies one of the major countries drops out of like the economy like india or america or like china like it fucks up the whole world you know and there's so many other things at risk here too with the climate change and the actual human rights and shit yeah this is major and we have to keep in mind that like i think india is the most populous or one of the most populous places in the world so it's like it's densely populated a huge percentage of the human beings on the planet live there Mm -hmm. so this is this is a major deal and it really uh, it really okay there's a couple of things it really bothers me how sort of myopic uh the the news is in america because i want you know i keep up on the news from uh, okay the view and the daily show so i don't i don't sit around and watch you you're know not, you're not an al jazeera girl no <laughs> i'm not an al jazeera girl um but i feel like i'm plugged into the headlines but that's the thing is like the headlines are very very selective as to what what they're showing you and usually it's things pertaining just to America but this is something that uh this is something that affects the whole world also the other thing is these tactics like cutting off the internet access 
to make it more difficult for the protesters to uh, work together and combine their forces. That is some fucked up shit. Yeah, but if we did that over here in D.C., we might have we might have um, halted those crazy people. Uh, well, it's 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 if like they could get on their Twitter. It's like a song. Cuts both ways. Cuts both ways. Because I remember uh, back when it was when it was like the Arab Spring, uh, and there were all those protests happening um, in the Middle East. Uh, the uh, uh, the protesters were using Twitter because it was the way of like, okay, watch out over here. There's fucking mm-hmm. tear gas or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, meet over here. We're gonna convene over here. And so like that was their tool for. Uh, combining forces and and rising up for good. So, like, if we if we use that against some people, shutting off the internet, then like that, then it can be used against the the good people too. It just reminds me. I of, don't know any of those. Uh, <laughs> Not on today's segment, darling. <laughs> it reminds me of Star Wars, and I think like Gabe and I just watched. All of the Star Wars. We just finished, like, from episode one all the way through until, like, the the most recent ones with Adam Driver and everything. You want to do Space Buns? Um, but no, I want to do those three um, Ray Buns in the back. The three, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the three ponytails in the Very back. Very sleek. Uh-huh, sleekness. Very sleek. A little hide uh, on top. <laughs> but... It reminds cutting off the internet reminds me of some fucking empire fucking first order bullshit, which is bad. Those are the bad guys. So, um, I don't know. We we stand with you, farmers, and um, uh, it's important to uh, keep an eye on this because it does it does affect the whole world. I think workers need to be fucking treated equitably. Period. Yeah, uh, and shout out to everywhere. um the Lalit Hotel. Hey, Keshef. When I tell you, you went to India. Yeah. Honey, I, I did a drag show in Calcutta. You didn't do the Calcutta gig. No, we, did, we didn't do Calcutta. The Calcutta gig, honey. Is the Calcutta gig good? They introduced me as William on the mic, and it oh, pretty no. much stayed at that level through the evening. <laughs> <laughs> but when I the tell Calcutta you- gig was my least favorite. All the other three nights were great, though. One was on a roof. It was, it was wonderful. They lived. We it had treated me su- amazing. Yes, we had Tell such about an room. amazing <laughs> time in in India. And I tell you, I have dreams about the black lentils. It <gasps> the doll. It was just I don't know what they did. They must have sung to it when it was boiling in the pot or something. Because literally, it's magical. The Lalit Hotel in India and. It was really fierce because the owner of the chain of hotels said, I'm going to make my hotels a space where queer people can congregate and do drag because it's illegal to do drag and it's illegal to be gay. But we're going to make this a safe space where and so it was like I met people who drag was completely new there because it was, there was no place to do it and it was illegal. And so they finally had a space to do it. It was really fucking inspiring. I and gay marriage India is legal much. there now. Uh, Keshef was like at the forefront of that whole fight and everything. He got married. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good ending to something in India at least. Uh, that's tea. We're going to be back. The next girl's music keeps skipping. We need to play it off her phone. Um, okay. Get, yeah. I'll call her. Do you have a dongle? Okay, we're going to find a dongle. We'll be right back. Who's going to pick up her money? Tasha's money is still out there. (laughs) Don't make Tasha go out there. She's in a gown. She can't bend. Who's going to sweep the stage? Get her money. (laughs) We'll be back. Hello, Forever Dog listeners. I'm Allison Raskin. And I'm Gabby Dunn. And we host the podcast Just Between Us, which is available right here, right now on Forever Dog. Just Between Us is a variety show that features listener questions, in-depth interviews, and topical topics. We also play a game show called Hypotheticals. I could try to explain it to you, but the rules keep changing. I make the rules. And I always lose. 
We're also joined each week by incredible guests, including disability activist Alice Wong, Planned Parenthood's Alexis McGill Johnson, best-selling author and therapist Lori Gottlieb, and primatologist Kate Gilmore. New episodes of Just Between Us drop every Wednesday. So while you're listening to this podcast, search for Just Between Us with Allison Raskin and Gabby Dunn. Hit that subscribe button and check us out. Please. Please. <laughs> Greetings, mortals. I am the Lord thy God, King of the Universe, creator of space. We don't need the vocal effects. Can we lose that? That's my actual voice. Okay, great. Hello. I am the Lord thy God, King of the Universe, creator of space and time, or as I prefer to be known these days, at the Tweet of God. For over a decade, I've entertained my over 6.2 million followers with my wit, misanthropy, and off-stated regret I created any and all of you. Well, now I'm taking my hilarious blend of contempt and disgust from the Twitterverse to the podcast verse with my new show, the predictably named Godcast, premiering Wednesday, January 27th on Forever Dog. On Godcast, I'll be opening up my infinite mind about everything from politics to the nature of reality to this week's point spreads to how much longer I'll save the queen to that weird new growth on your neck. I'll answer prayers, take spiritual phone calls, surprise people with live eternal damnations, justify the platypus, and even explain the Bible, which is not at all easy to do. Plus, every episode, I'll be interviewing a guest, either alive, like Stephen Colbert, Zoe Deschanel, and Lin-Manuel Miranda, or dead, like Moses, Amelia Earhart, and Lizzie Borden. Joining me for it all will be my adorable sidekick, the 18 to 34 demo appealing Joan of Arc. Hi, God. Hi, Joan. You excited for the show? Sure am. Hey, could you put me out now? Not now. Maybe soon. <laughs> Sounds great. New episodes of Godcast will premiere every Wednesday, so be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Or you can, and will, go to hell. Godcast, from the creator of At the Tweet of God, and everything else. back and we are so excited because you know every now and then we like to do a tip spot a little tip we spot like for girls to, right we like to invite a diva of drag to join us just to pop in uh pop on stage do a tip spot so we are so excited because today you can come we, in <laughs> you can come in hi do i need a she, sign what I love is yeah. that she thought she muted us. She pressed That's the button. Thank you. She pressed the button like we were muted and we were not muted. At all. Wait, what? She, we were not muted Thank in you any you way. Too. Have a good one. Maybe she muted. Maybe she muted us, and then it. No, it's totally. It, see, see, I it, always fuck up a girl's intro. God damn it! This is why Detox wouldn't give me the mic ever. And um, you and you read when people say William instead of Willem. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> We are so excited because today we have uh, an excellent, exquisite diva of drag uh, and a paragon of drag excellence. The one and only Asia O'Hara is here. What's up, guys? How are y'all? Oh, not the applause. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They love you. You get entrance. You get entrance applause. The high tech uh, gig here. Start the mix over. Start it over. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's going on? Not much. Just podcasting. Full drag on a on a Wednesday. On a uh, random Wednesday. Uh, mm-hmm. How's Texas? Is it wide open? It, well, girl. I mean, no, it's like in the. It's like in between. If you're in the city, it's by the book. If you're out of the city limits, it's it's a whole rodeo. It's just like so. It's like it's real weird. It's real peculiar. Well, you look amazing. Thank um, you. And you, leopard print is always a thrilling moment to me. So I, I am obsessed Faith. with your garment. Oh Thank my god, you. girl! I just got this um leopard stretch denim. <gasps> Stop it now! I need Stop a capri. I need a mini. I need a bolero the- <laughs> and a lot of it. <laughs> Like ten yards. Honey. Oh. So that's beautiful. You don't need that. You don't need that, girl. No. 
You can't. No. Let Do- me have one or two nice animal print things. Oh, honey, I've seen God. your wardrobe. You were turning it on all. I've of these seen Vasa yours. Bags. We're not all sample size, so let me have something. I'm an eight now. <laughs> <laughs> you can, an eight. you can, you can grab anything you want out of the closet, honey. Um, your looks. That that dandelion look that you did on Drag Race, that's still like just like and the balloon that Thank that you. that I still get nightmares and dreams over. Like, Thank you very much. Gorgeous. <laughs> what are you doing for the superhero? What's your like? Is it superhero or aliens this time? It's <laughs> both. They're done yes. with countries. Yes, yes. <laughs> we did come. We already did. We are, and then we did aliens. So no, it's superheroes. Um, What's your power? And um, I am doing like an LED video game mm. samurai kind of superhero thing. Mm, um, work. So I'm excited. I, as I mean, I'm all into like LED and light up stuff now all of a sudden. And I have a tendency to hyper focus. So I'm like, everything <laughs> that I do has to light up. So, um, yeah, so I'm doing that. It's like, I'm excited. Um, um, yeah, it was not my, I was doing something else. And uh, me and one of the other girls were doing the same gig. And so I was like, let me just do something different. So who was it? Katana from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> that was doing the same gig as me. Melina. No. Melina, Melina Katana no, was, Jade. Exactly. Yoshimitsu. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, this is but this is regarding Drive and Drag, yeah. mm-hmm. which is the new tour is called Drive and Drag Saves 2021. And this is not that is not a joke because literally the drive in shows have been one of the only places that has been a working tour that has been safe. Yeah and responsible and an amazing show. So when does the when does it start? It starts February 19th um oh in gosh. Atlanta. Um oh, and it's wow. like Atlanta, uh Tampa, Fort Lauderdale, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, Houston, Phoenix, Los LA. Angeles. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm glad we got LA this time. Y'all skipped us on Halloween and I was like, we can't be spooky hoes. Girl, y'all y'all didn't miss anything. Um no, it's it's exciting. It's wow. um it's interesting that it's it's billed as like us saving 2021 because um like last year when we started it in the late summer and it was mm-hmm. literally I told people in every city on stage that they were um essentially like, they were saving us like they were literally saving our lives by by coming to the show and subscribing to Gee. you know the entertainment and um buying the merch because <clears throat> as you know like drag queens are already like on the edge of insanity and so we were all were stir right. crazy we were losing our minds we were losing our sense of purpose as far as entertainment is concerned so um we were we were just so thankful that people were ready for drive and drag and that people were excited about it because it was such a feeling of like oh my god i'm back home i'm back i'm doing something that i love to do so it's um it's it's great i live so okay so do you do anything differently because you were on the last tour you were hosting so yes. what are like and in vegas vegas you turned it out you were the host for that and like yes. you ran that shit Thank like you when 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 the the book wasn't there the performance certainly was you know thank you thank you thank yeah you, thank you yeah do you do was anything it- differently in a drive-in show than you would in a theater um yeah, it's 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 a different kind of animal because in the theater you can you can look right down at people and be in people's mm-hmm. faces and it's a lot easier um to connect to people. And so the drive and drag people are much further away, obviously. And um a lot of times they're actually in their cars. There's a glare on the windshield, so you can't see anybody's faces. Um right. so it's a you have to be a lot more and then there's also not the clapter, the clapter, that too. The clap or the <laughs> laugh. I think you had, yeah, I think you had the clapter when you were like in high school, right, Willem? Um, no, there's, like, there's not the applause or the or the 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 laughter like you're used to, and mm-hmm. so you have to really be a lot more um, self aware, and you have to. Um, um, it's it's not like just grabbing the mic or being on stage in a theater or even in a bar because you may be doing great and it may be dead silence and they may be loving it and living in their cars, but it may yeah. be like when we were in Denver and it was, you know, 11 degrees and they have their windows rolled up. So um, to answer your question, yeah, what what you do differently is, is try and be very self-aware and very um, um, 
rehearsed and confident in what you're going to present because you don't have the immediate energy um, or the tangible energy from the audience that you're used to, that most of us are used to. Yeah. Yeah, but I think everybody knows the moment you step out on stage, it's an event and it's starting. So like yeah. you could do the show with blinders and earplugs and everyone knows that the show would still be sickening if you were on stage, Asia. Like you were Thank the first you. girl I saw to do like lights on her fingers, doing the Nikki thing, all the feathers. Like I remember in like 2009, I worked with you at S4 and I was like, this girl has like, she changes hair every number, new costume, <laughs> new nail, like you everything just drag perfection and when Thank they ask you. us for girls names for the seasons like who who should we look out for who's auditioning back in the day they used to ask us you were on my list i remember and then you i, I thought you, you were going to get on something but you had a give up date or something yeah and then, that, yeah that was like for me i was like oh the world is being deprived of no asia's drag because like oh. you were on everybody's list and Thank like you i'm glad i'm glad we get to see it and we get to see bianca and and Violet, Plastique, Cameron, Naomi, Aquaria. Um, it really yeah. is an amazing show, and Thank I cannot you. wait to see it. So one of the things that happens at the drive-in shows is the audience gets really into it. Uh-huh. So, like, did you, what is what are some of the craziest, like, setups that you've seen people bring with, with their cars? Girl, I'm telling you, people, it's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's thing. a thing. It's an event. It is a tailgate party for people. There are people, yes. of course, that you know that are, um, that don't know what to expect. So they just come and they just sit there. But no, people come, they bring their entire family. They bring their dogs. Mm-hmm. They bring lawn chairs. They bring coolers. <laughs> they bring uh, battery power, George Foreman grills. Um, it Work. is a picnic for people. Um, yes. Wait, you went through Eureka's drag bag? Yes, uh, girl. Uh, yes. Uh, it's a, it's a, um, I, think, <laughs> I think the craziest setup was we were in um, Denver and it was a full on snowstorm. And Blizzard. I, we saw. yeah, I was Oof. thinking, okay, there's no way this show's happening. So I kept waiting for a text message saying the show was canceled. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to start getting in drag. And so I get to the, we get to the venue and it's Cameron and I, and it's, everything is covered in snow, like covered in oh like God. 18 inches of snow. So I was like, these people aren't coming to this show. Girl, sure enough, Denver. they start pulling in one by one. And so, the craziest setup was I literally saw these people that they had the VIP, which is an outside area where you can actually be outside and away from your car in like mm-hmm. a little uh, caged in little area. And they had battery powered um, uh, 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 heaters and Marsh. they had hot dogs and they were roasting marshmallows on these battery powered oh, heaters in a blizzard Lord. watching themselves a drag show. God bless the nice. child. Yeah, that's the power of drag. The power of drag, girl. I'm, that. I'm. We're we're so grateful that um you joined us today. Um uh, and you can get tickets at vosseventscom slash drive and drag drive dash n dash drag. Mm-hmm. And we want to thank our very special tip spot guest. For being here today, the one and only Asia O'Hara. Thank you. I love you guys. I will see y'all at Drive and Drag. Honk your horn when you see your girl. Beep, beep. Send me that leopard (laughs) denim. (laughs) Yes, I will. (laughs) HelloFresh shops, plans, and delivers recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can cook, eat, and enjoy at home. There's a reason it's America's number one meal kit. And let me tell you, in 2021, I'm looking for something fresh. Uh. Mm. Yes to the fresh. (laughs) HelloFresh offers 23 recipes each week, featuring a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients that you'll never get bored of. And HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy your cooking and get dinner on the table in less than 30 minutes. Kids, clean off those backpacks. (laughs) Cut down on grocery bills and food waste. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients so you're not overbuying, which is a burden on the planet and your wallet. Yeah, plus HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need for every week. You can easily change your delivery days or food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Have you been cooking? You know, every now and then I like to dabble in the kitchen and I have to tell you this refried black bean poblano flautas with Ooh. guacamole and pico de gallo. Honey, Hell yeah. Get into it. Mm. Yeah. 
That sounds delicious. So listen up, Chasers. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash 10 drag. And use that code 10 drag for 10 free meals. You get oh. it? Including free shipping. That's the number 10, one zero, okay? Go to HelloFresh.com slash 10 drag. And use code 10 drag. drag. For 10 free meals, including free shipping. Get cooking with America's number one meal kit. Hello, Hello fresh. fresh. We are uh, back, 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 back again. Oh. And, uh, uh, given you the entrance of the cave was open, and I was just I was surprised at it gaping how it is. <laughs> I got more yes gods than the Vatican. Um, uh, we are oh. back, and it's time for us to go spelunking, unking, unking, deep, deep inside deep, 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 the DMs. Um, do you want to hear this first message from Joe? Sure do. This is Hi Alaska, Willy Wonka, Big D, and any esteemed guests, if applicable or mm. flickable. My name is Joe, and I live in England with my boyfriend of almost four years. Over the mm. years, there's been more than one occasion that I've seen sexual messages and pictures from other guys on my boyfriend's phone, and we argued about it. We've also argued when I found my boyfriend on an online hookup site aimed at chubs and chub chasers. I confronted hey. him and asked him to take his profile down, and he said he would. Since then, I've had my suspicions that he didn't. Well, ladies, my suspicions were confirmed this morning as when he was in the shower, my boyfriend's alarm on his phone went off, so I woke up to turn it off. While I was up, I did some very surface-level snooping and found recent messages, we're talking like a couple of days ago, where he had been texting a guy and introduced himself as blank, insert name here, from blank, insert name, hookup site name here. They proceeded to exchange pictures and sexy texts. I'm more than happy for my boyfriend to be free with his sexuality and do whatever he wants. I don't own him, but I can't help feel that this kind of repetitive betrayal of my trust and shadiness behind my back isn't working wonders for our relationship. In fact, I know it isn't because it's all I can think about. I guess my question is, after each previous argument we've had surrounding this, I always forgive and we try to move on, but when is enough enough? Should I confess to snooping through his phone or do I keep it to myself like I usually do? How would you suggest I approach the topic? Thank you for any all helped attach to the nudies for your viewing pleasure regards joe deep friend of the pod Oof. well uh the, nude, the nudes are gorgeous yes thank you for the nudes joe deep friend of the pod in, in recline um yes two in nipples repose. plenty of tats and uh, i see um, a thigh tattoo which i always love it reminds me of amy Vodka oh House. right past the, the lighthouse near that rocky outcropping of pubes I see that too. Uh, yes, that dick. S- yes, um, and I like the tile work in the. Uh, hmm. Is the bedroom or a bathroom? Hmm. I think maybe it's a bedroom. lounge room. Mm-hmm. Girl, a you know a den. You know, a den, <laughs> um, a cub room. Um, uh, I, I have thoughts on this. Please tell me your thoughts. Well, first of all, okay, Cast your thoughts, this, this is to the boyfriend. This is to the boyfriend, the trifling ass, cheating ass boyfriend. <laughs> first of all, if you're going to be a trifling ass, cheating ass boyfriend, why the ever living fuck are you leaving your phone in in the room with your boyfriend when you get a shower? I mean, mm-hmm. that is... that. I learned my lesson years ago because that's when shit hit the fan with me and Sharon because I let I made the mistake of getting a shower, leaving my phone in the room with Sharon Needles. And so I came back out and it wasn't I wasn't even cheating on her with this guy, but she found some message that she deemed inappropriate and it became a whole thing. So I'm like, okay. First of all, don't be a cheating, trifling ass boyfriend. Second of all, if you are being a cheating ass, trifling ass boyfriend, don't leave your fucking phone in the room with your boyfriend. And also, this is this is for Joe. My advice is, you know what? He has shown himself to you as far as who he is and what he's into and what he's about. So you cannot expect him 
to change. This is something he's done multiple times. So you have to ask yourself, am I going to stay in this relationship and just accept that he's going to chat with other guys? He's probably going to hook up with other guys. You know, this is a he's going to exchange photos with other guys. This is going to happen. You have that input. So you have to say, oh. is am I going to stay in the relationship and know that that's going to happen and be okay with it? Or, you know, you can't keep getting mad over the same thing over and over again. Mm-mm, that makes you look stupid, I think. Well, not stupid, but more forgiving to a fault, basically. Um, I, I think the same thing that you thought... Um, if he's into ch- if he's into ch- chubs though, you could definitely stand for a few more meals though to get up to what he likes because, uh, you know, bring some food into the bedroom. <laughs> I'm saying what? this guy's not this guy's not like uh, he did, like he counts as like a cub. I think he okay. would count as a cub. Cub, and that's you obviously that a, a cub room. Earlier. A cub room. <laughs> what a delightful name for a room. The cub room. I don't think that he should admit to going through the phone. I think he just needs to say, I know. And let's not, like, talk it's about it. You want to admit it. It's perfectly innocent. And if you want an icebreaker, say, I have this podcast I want you to listen to, honey. Honey. Let's listen to it. Let's listen to it together or listen to it separate. Just be like, you really should listen to this episode specifically. Because you didn't do anything wrong, Joe. You didn't go through his phone. You turn off his alarm. Oh, wait. Then you did go through the phone. Yeah, but he didn't mean to. He was woken. Well. He was woken. No, he, he wasn't thinking right. He was woken from his slumber. <laughs> Joe's not a fall here. Uh-uh. Um, I, oh, right. I definitely think he's... This guy likes lying to you about this more than he loves you. You know? Because he keeps oh. lying to you about it. I think you can persist and have a relationship. <gasps> There's just, another nude! You just have to. I, that's oh, the yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's the one with the, the, with the tile. tile work. Oh, with yeah, the advanced the tile, tile work. work. Um, I think almost. I think that you can persist and that have a relationship. You can. <laughs> I have girls. You can, you can have <laughs> a relationship with this person, but you have to change your expectations because he's shown you who he is. That's mm-hmm. all. Or so start charging. It's gonna keep happening if you and. That's you have to either be okay with it or move on or okay. catch him in the trap. That's fun too. No, we're not doing all that. Oh, on don't. This good day. No, no okay. Profiles. The next message is from Jess. Does anyone else do this? Watch the episode until Rue says, bring back my girls, then pause. Then go watch the corresponding Untucked episode. Then pause Untucked when they're about to leave to go to the main stage. Then go back to the main episode. Equals sequential viewing going into the main stage, understanding what's gone on backstage. From Jess. Wait. No, because well, you have the lip sync in the middle and they spoil the lip sync at the end of Untucked. That's true. So that wouldn't work for me, Jess. Um, well, I think she's saying that you that you pause it before you get to that point. It, you pause Untucked. So you just see like what happens before they get called out for judgment. Oh. Call, called back. So um, I have never done this, but I love this idea. And I'm sure you're not alone. I'm sure there's other people who do this. But I mean... I watch it on TV, so I'm at the whim of VH1's programming, and so they put them in uh, in order of the show and then untucked. So that's what I do. I hmm. watch the I watch the three hour block of drag, <laughs> and I and I love every second of it, and I love every second, and I watch the ads with Heidi and Closet, and I love every second of it. Sometimes I see ads for the drag queen pageant competition contest of the year that's coming up yeah. it is uh you can you can check out the link in my bio to get tickets it's uh it's gonna be such an amazing show and i'm really really excited about it mm-hmm. we have another uh message Ooh. someone who's fact checked me we always appreciate oh, that oh they're gonna check the doll <laughs> this says hi check me boo <laughs> <laughs> who gonna fact check me boo <laughs> Oh, hi, Alaska Willem and Dipper. On Hot Goss last week, Alaska mentioned that the video of Courtney painting her was the most view- her most viewed video on YouTube. I'm sorry, Alaska, but the test determined that was a lie. I went and checked, and the video is actually your 11th highest viewed video with 1.7 million views. 
Your top three videos are The T with 14.8 million views. Love that video a minute. Um, <laughs> number two, Your Makeup is Terrible, which was I thought was number one. That has 6.8 million views. And number three is Come to Brazil with 5.5. Mm-hmm. Whitney Mariah. Um, yes. Also, just to fact check Alaska one more time, I believe she mentioned last week that a live singing rusical would never happen in the U.S. as it does in the U.K. But wasn't Cher rusical with live vocals? Also, wasn't Shade the rusical live? Okay, now I'm going to have to stop her. <laughs> and aren't those two of your favorite rusicals, Alaska? Anyway, love the pod. Sam, one of your basement fact checking unpaid interns. P.S. for Patreon video, can you recreate Shade the rusical? Um, first of all, she got some of that right, but some of it was wrong. Cher Rusical and Shay the Rusical were both pre-recorded vocals that the girls lip synced to. No, the, no, they were they? live. They how were did they live, get that live, voice live. effect on Cracker's Cher thing then? They because the, it in, like how Cher does. The handheld mic that she was uh, holding, like her main mic is the is the body mic. Or oh. or maybe I think they had head mics, but then she had a handheld which had the effect on it. Got it. Oh, I um, always thought they were pre-records. Uh no, they were not. That's why Courtney had some clunkers in there. Courtney uh, had some clunkers. <laughs> Let me be your star. Yeah. Ah. Um, uh, Courtney had some clunkers. damn. The, well, Sam I checked. thank you for your input. I I was <laughs> basing it. I was bi- I I received a report from my you know from some some people who sit in an office who who analyze these things and they and they were I think they were looking at a certain time period of like the, over the last year or something and the Courtney Act video in the last year was somehow strangely or what whatever algorithm they were looking at it was the highest most viewed but definitely not the most viewed on my channel. Uh, thank God. Um, uh, do you want to apologize to everyone for the misinformation? I, uh, you know, I do. I want to deeply apologize. And Especially to Sam. Thank you. It's very true. Share the Rusical and Shade the Rusical are absolutely fabulous. And they were all live vocals. And there were very few clunkers overall in those. Especially Shade the Rusical. Courtney I wasn't mean, there. I mean... No, Shade the Rusical. Courtney was in it, and she was so good. She was oh, so good. Oh, she was good. the lead. Yeah, she was. Uh, Adore Delano. I just got off the bus. Yes. Adore Delano. <laughs> Even Milk, who is not a singer, was able to do this really, like, riveting, amazing performance. Uh, so, uh, we are the comedy queens. We queens. It, a girl, I would be happy to recreate this. We would have to get... Uh, we would have to somehow get an instrumental or some sort of instrumentation of it uh, in order for us to do it as a Patreon video. But I would absolutely love to do it. That'd be so fun. I just got off Not the, the bus. bus. I don't eat or drink or cause. Um, She drinks. Uh, oh, um, cute. Look at me. Look at how cute I look. This is from Leonardo. I forgot to put his name on the... Oh, Leonardo sent in a little screen cap because he was watching Sex and the City. This just comes off as me bragging, but <laughs> I'm no, in the thumbnail. No, it's because we had the whole whole joke about Alaska's the thumbnail girl, and Leonardo wanted to yeah. say, you're the thumbnail girl, too. Oh, oh that's cute. Yeah, so I am the thumbnail girl for this episode. Work. So this is a thumbnail for Sex and the City, season three, episode six. And who do we see? I see Willem. Is that Flotilla? Flotilla's right next to me, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know the uh, who are the other girls? Flotilla, a drag queen in the black hair. His name was Rohan. Mark. And the one in the blonde, I forget her name, but she was the one that told me to hide my union vouchers because people steal. Extra steal. <laughs> they do. <laughs> um, you so- look sickening. I... I 17. Also, I love okay, so just to describe for the listeners at home, you're wearing your natural hair. Natural hat. <laughs> uh that is your like natural, beautiful, like ginger blonde, kind of curly hair. You're holding that um coffee cup from that famous like Greek place where all the TV shows, that's where everyone's holding the coffee uh-huh. coffee cup from. <laughs> you have on a mesh sort of d- mini dress. It's like see-through, no brazier. And a thong, and you don't look to be tucked in any form or fashion. You no. look like you're stuffed, actually. It was not tucked. It was a black international male thong. Yes. And then some black boots that they gave me that I kept. 
The, I love this look and not a stitch of makeup, girl. Oh, honey, I put on some lip gloss and some mascara. It was the full Courtney Hamilton treatment. Um, you but look it was fierce. It wasn't even a dress. It was just a tube of netting that I got at like <laughs> this this fishing supply store in like Cocoa Beach, Florida, for real. And I just kept it, and then I like tied it at my neck, and I was like, "This will work. This is like a little scoochie dress." It was. So you fun. are sickening. Uh, I. <laughs> love this look i'm blown away um we can go ahead and are we allowed to put that on instagram yeah um this episode is horribly transphobic season three episode six are we sluts that's what yeah. this is from. Right. Episode six actually isn't the transphobic one. The one the transphobic one is after this, like where it's it's there's three different hookers, none of the ones that you see mm. here. They didn't even ask Flotilla back. And um hmm. that's when Samantha goes in. But um we go in every week, so we want to thank you for listening to <laughs> the hot Gossingtons. Mm, thank you mm. so much. And a special, special Deep salute of the week to our tip spot, Asia O'Hara. That's right. Get tip your spot. drive and drag ticks. Absolutely. And don't forget to submit your vote for us for best podcast for the 2021 Queer Tees. That's queertea.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can uh, vote. Often. Send Rock us your vote. questions via email to racechaserpodcast at gmail.com and we can talk about whatever you want us to talk about. Let's get on something. Um, we have bonus video content available on patreon.com slash Willem. Willem. Just search using the hashtag race chaser and you can watch the videos a la carte. And we will continue to release some of the Patreon content from 2019 uh, for free now on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed to both Willem and Alaska on YouTube. Hit the bell icon so you get notifications. Mm-hmm. And you can follow yeah. us on Instagram at Willem at the Only Alaska Five Thousand at Race Chaser Pod and at Mom Podcast. And that, that link on yeah, mm-hmm. go. I just go. I, she's the IG girl. Uh, that link on IG at Race Chaser Pod has all the resources and places to donate money in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. So please check that out, please. That's please. right. And wear a mask, wash your hands, stay safe and healthy. And we'll be back next week with more steaming, steaming, oh shit, scalding. Hot Goss is a Forever Dog podcast. Produced by Big Dipper. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Mixed and mastered by Will Pitts. Our theme song is graciously provided by ATF Enterprises. This goss is hot. hot. 